Hey, you guys, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Tips with T. On today, I have Miss Caroline on with us today. How are you doing, Miss Caroline? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being on the show today. So tell us more about yourself and what you do as an entrepreneur. I help e-commerce entrepreneurs, mainly with Shopify, but other platforms as well. And I help people who are starting out in wanting to create a business where they can work from home essentially or have the lifestyle that they're looking for. I'm very much about that. I came from a background of working 70, 80 hours a week, having to be on my feet, being booked out up to three years in advance and decided that I wanted a different sort of lifestyle. So now I help people create that lifestyle for themselves. Awesome. Awesome. I know you do talk about, um, talk a lot about having a custom avatar. So tell us more about that and how do you teach your clients how to properly use it? Sure. So that's probably one of the biggest things that I recommend to people. We get a lot of people, we've got a marketing agency, which is for small tasks and people come to us and they pay a monthly plan and they get uh, individual tasks done. And most people that come to us, they're making something under about 10,000 a month. That's sort of where we sit with new, new clients, uh, people that have got new stores. And what I find is 99% of people that come to us are not making sales yet. And that is because that they don't understand who their customer is. Now this works, whether you're a yoga instructor, whether you're a financial planner, doesn't matter what you do, but if you don't understand your customer and what the psychology of is going on in their head, you will never be able to target them at all. So it's very important that we actually understand who our actual customer is. And I really go into a lot of detail. I've got a video that I um, have created, especially specifically for e-commerce, because what we do is that we sort of make sure that the people are on the right wavelength when it comes to someone purchasing for the uh, reasons of e-commerce. And I like to make you imagine that you've created one person. So the person, her name might be Jenny. She might be 30 years old and she's got three kids. The other persona might be someone who's a 50 year old male and he doesn't have children living at home. And by understanding who your actual customer is, and it can be different. You could have quite a few, you could have five, you could have 10, you could have one type of customer, but understanding who this customer is or the multiple layers of them, then what you can do is say, okay, I'm going to speak to this woman in this way. I'm going to speak to this man in this way. Because if you were selling, let's say, um, iPhone covers, then you're probably going to be able to say different words to the person who is um, needing the iPhone cover to stop sticky fingers or they need to throw it in their handbag knowing that there's going to be other products in their handbag compared to a man who's 50 and doesn't have children at home. He's not buying an iPhone cover for the same reasons. Awesome. So that is very good, very informative. Um, so what other tricks do you teach your clients about the target market? I know you talk a lot about doing a, like a three month plan or one page marketing plan. Yeah, so that's another one. So I've been, look, I've been in e-commerce for over 12 years. I started my first e-commerce store 12, now 13 years ago, actually. And I started my own shoe business. Um, and that was back in the day before e-commerce was anything like it is now completely different world. And before that I did offline marketing. I also had quite a few businesses offline as well. So while there's specific things you can look at for e-commerce, it's generally the same sort of rules across all types of businesses. And what I found was when I started in my first business, I had a hairdressing salon back when I was 20. And I realized that marketing was so important to business success. And there were these plans. And I, I remember being so proud of these marketing plans I've created. They're 30, 40 pages. I bind them. I print them off and I bind them. They look beautiful. But you never look at them again. And anyone listening that has ever created a marketing plan knows this. So what I did over the last, um, especially the last five years, was I created a three-month uh, three marketing plan which is one page, it's just over, it depends how much you put, how much information. So our clients get between one and one and a half pages of information. But you can literally just look at this one document and 
overall understand what's going to happen for the next three months. And why this is so important is that without a plan, you cannot move forward. There's so many bright, shiny objects these days, whether that be a new computer program or whether that be a new social media platform. We keep on thinking that we have to jump to the next thing because someone told us, oh, I'm using TikTok and it works for me. And someone else says, no, I use Pinterest and it works for me. And what I find is most people are jumping, just like with not having a customer avatar organized, they do not know what their plan is for the next three months. And the best thing, you can ask your friends this, that have a business. What's your plan in your business for the next three months? And I can guarantee most people don't know. The answer will be to make money. But that's not a plan. That's, you know, that's your goal, Mm -hmm. but that's not your actual plan. So by having a plan and what we say is only come up with maximum three places that you want to be placing content. So we usually say blogging is one option. Email has to be an option these days. And then you're allowed to choose one or two other social media platforms. So it might be Instagram and Facebook. It might be Facebook and Pinterest. It might be Facebook and Twitter. But what happens is most people think I need to have all of those icons on my website, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, Snapchat, whatever the ones are. And everyone's so um, worried that if I don't have those icons on my website, that I'm not a good business. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Just put up the icons of the social media that you're actually working on and stick to one or two. If you've got a larger team, of course, go for more. But when we're small businesses, I would rather you do one or two social media platforms very, very well than trying to do them all. So then what we do is we say, okay, three-month plan, here are the couple of things that we're going to do. Let's say it's email, let's say it's Facebook, and let's say it's Twitter, for example. And then what you can do is say, okay, well, now I know those are the three platforms I'll stick to. And the content that you put on one, you can actually use for the other platforms as well. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to go exactly straight over. The Facebook size image is going to be different from what you'll put in an email and will be different from Twitter, but the general content can stay similar. And then that's where we've got a three-month content calendar that comes after the three-month plan. So we've got a few layers there, but you create a three-month plan, one page. It's super simple. For someone who has no idea what to do, it'll take them one or two hours to create it based on a template that I've created myself. And then from there, then they create the content calendar and they say, okay, I'm going to stick to Facebook and Twitter and email. And then what it does, it stops the overwhelm. It also stops bright, shiny syndrome as a shiny object syndrome where people are telling you to try things and you can say, no, I'm going to stick with these. And then you've got a three month plan where if after three months you're not comfortable anymore and you think, okay, well, maybe I should be on TikTok because I've been hearing so much. After three months, you can change if your data, if your analytics show that what you've been doing so far is not working for you. So it's about being focused. It's about having a plan and it's about getting things done without running around and chasing your tail. Because I can tell you after all of these years, I guarantee you will fail if that's what you're doing in your business. Awesome. So do you, will will you like to share one with us to see what it kind of looks like to give people a better idea? Sure, I can do that. I can show you a template that um, we have got. So I'll do a screen share with you. Okay, let me start sharing my screen. Okay, let me go ahead now. And I think it's sharing now. So I'll just pull up the actual. This has got some examples in it already. So we'll go through this particular business. The one that I'm showing you is actually a company that does coffee but on a different sort of level. So it doesn't really matter what the business is, but just so if someone says, what's that information in there, you can understand it. They sell coffee online. Mm -hmm. So this is, like I said, if I just scroll down, you can see all of that pink area is the part that um, uh, clients fill out. And then we've got some three little, two little green boxes as well. And then down the bottom, we sort of keep this lead, lead capture system. You can change around, but that's pretty good for most businesses. Mm -hmm. You can see at the top, the first thing I do is I say business focus or customer focus. And the reason why I like people to see this is to understand what, why they're doing what they're doing. So the pink areas are for the business. And the first thing I say is come up with three objectives for your business. Now, 
we generally say one objective is, objective is income, one is lead generation and one is social, but these can be any objectives that you want them to be. These are just the ones that work for most businesses. Now, an objective is a smart goal. An objective is not to make lots of money. It's not to get lots of people to my website. It has to be a specific number. So like it says here, to make $10,000 a month, in the case of this client, it was 134 subscriptions per month to make that money. So that's a nice objective of saying, okay, we've got a clear goal of what we're trying to um, aim for. Then we've got lead generation, 600 email signups. Now that's based on saying, if you get 600 email signups, then you can expect that, um, that that's about 15% of people who come to your website will sign up on an email list. So that's sort of saying that we're expecting X amount of traffic. So we can work those numbers the other way to work out what that is. But that's actually quite a nice number that doesn't sound ridiculous when you know this particular business. And then social media, how many followers that they want to collect. Now, the next thing is your SWOT. And I make everyone do this so then you can understand your own strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in your business. And this only has to be bullet point and just quickly thought about, and you can always come back. So the great thing about this document, you can update it anytime you want to. But by coming up with what your strengths and weaknesses are and opportunities in your business, it starts to open your mind to, this is what's possible for the next three months. Now, one piece of advice I'll give you is if you've got an e-commerce business is don't say that your strength is customer service unless you have the customer service of a company like Zappos, for example. By saying we accept people to send us emails is not excellent customer service. That's not a strength. And it's one that I see a lot of people saying. So you've got to be serious. If you want to say that your strength is customer service, then that means you're going to have like Zappos, 365 day returns policy. You're going to have people there 24 hours a day on your actual line, answering phone calls, answering text messages, answering emails. If that's your, if customer service is your strength, but if your customer service is standard, then you can't use that. So be serious and be honest about what your actual strengths are. The next one is core brand value. So in this case for this client, it was about being honest. It's about being the best we can. It's about an era of excitement. It's about satisfaction. It's about um, being adventurous, creative, and open-minded. So what are your core brand values? And you can Google this and have a look what other companies are saying and start to put your list together. And again, be honest and don't take on too many core brand values. I'd rather you have two core brand values than have 10 that are wishy-washy. So whatever you've got there, they have to be really strong core brand values for your business. Then we go across to the next line down is goals. So goals are just generally, they're like um, objectives, but these ones can be sort of added onto your objectives and these can be a little bit more open where you can just sort of say, these are the things that we're hoping to aim for. Again, you can put numbers in here. You can be quite specific, but you don't have to. It's just that in your objectives, I want you to stick to three. So then over the next three months, you can say we're specifically heading towards these objectives. If you start to put 10 objectives in, you're going to get lost in that in the three month period. Remember, this is only three months. So you can always change it after three months and change your objectives. Here we've got a list of the competitors. So then you already, you always know who your competitors are. If you have team members helping you, helping you in your business, they can go and look up those competitors to get a better idea of who you are as a business and then have a look at who the competitors are. The next thing is, is the target audience and their needs. This is your customer avatar, which is a completely different type of training, but put in there sort of the main key uh, points about your customer. Now, as you can see here, the income for this particular client is that the, av the customer needs to be earning over $80,000 a year. Now, what will that mean? Why would you need to know that? Let's say you want to run a Facebook ad. 90% of people that I see running Facebook ads are running Facebook ads to a general audience or they're running it to, for example, the whole of the US. Now, that is the craziest thing to do. If you know that your actual uh, customer has to earn over a certain amount of money, 
running a Facebook ad to the whole of the US is the worst way to spend your money you could ever imagine. What we do in that case is that we would turn around and say, what are the highest earning zip codes in the US? And we're first going to advertise there. Once we start to flood that market with our, our business, then we can start to expand further and further. But I see Facebook ad companies doing this to people all the time, just saying, oh, we're going to target everyone in the US. Or another client of mine, she was selling gym equipment. And I said, call me crazy, I'm not from the US, but I have a feeling like gym equipment would mainly sell in places like Miami and California. And the client that I was speaking to said, that's exactly right, that is where our sales come from. And I found out that they'd been working with an ad company who was like literally just running their ads over the whole of the US and about 70% of their money was being wasted on parts of the US that just don't buy their gym equipment. So it's very important that you know your target market. The next one is message to market. So having, and I'll give you guys a copy of this so you can have the template and you can look through and sort of get an idea for your own business. Then you've got message for mar to market. So this is sort of the message that you want to get across, the key words that you want people to know about your business. What is making your business different from every other business out there? How are you helping those people? Then we put in a marketing budget. What can you spend? every month for the next three months in your business. Now, if that's only $100 a month, like this particular business, that's fine, but put it into a budget. So then when you are spending money on random things, you can stop yourself and say, hang on, I cannot just be spending money there. Where should I be spending my money to make the most of it? The next one is we just put in paid marketing channels and free marketing channels. So like I said before, you just wanna to stick to a few of these. Now, if you only have a hundred dollar budget, then maybe you're not going to be able to do as much advertising. And in that case, stick to retargeting ads because retargeting ads you need to have, get your free tra traffic to your website and then spend a little bit of money. It's about $25 a month to get some people to, um, to come back to your website who have already been. People need up to 14 times to purchase from you. So if you're going to keep running um, your message out to the cold audience, then you're just collecting more cold traffic, more cold traffic, and not letting the other people know that they can come back again. Then we've got the free marketing channels. Like I said, you just want to have a couple in here. We've got in here um, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Now, the Facebook and YouTube is really in this case for this client, really just linking off their Instagram traffic. And then this particular client, we are recommended share a sale, which doesn't actually take much work from you. Um, once it's set up, it takes, it, as we said, here's $650 to set up. It's where you run an affiliate program and other people sell your actual products on your behalf. So that's a really good way to get people to come to your website that is already warm traffic from a different audience. And then we've got some hashtags there that we recommend. And then in the next lines, we go through and we say, here's the actual three month strategy. Now that we've got the base, what's the three month strategy? And we take from the paid and the free marketing channels and we say, okay, these are the things that we're gonna do. And this is it. So I've had clients say to me before, it doesn't look like you're asking us to do very much over like each month. And I say to people, if you get through everything I give you per month, I know it looks like a little bit, but if you get through it, I will give you a new marketing plan for free. So then you could have more things to do. I can tell you until this day, I've never had anyone come back to me because this is enough. We don't need to overwhelm it ourselves. And people think if I put more on the list, I'll get more done. And it's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. So keep it really simple. And in this case, we've got here, put together an offer on a sign up, uh, do your Instagram followers and do a competition for the Instagram account and then follow your competitors' followers and then create week, weekly emails and then uh, do some influencer marketing and your retargeting ads. Sure, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you dedicate time each day and then you take care of your customer service and then you're thinking about your emails and you're looking at ways to expand your business, this is enough for you to do and you're going to do these areas very, very well. So you don't need more than that in your own three-month plan. Month two, we've added in some videos there. We've done a little bit about Pinterest ads 
happens there as well. So we've added another layer in month two. And then in month three, you can see that we go through and we say, now you can write some blog posts. So every month we are adding a little bit more, but this does not make this client overwhelmed. I actually had her on my podcast and she told me from this plan, she said that she actually had uh, completed everything each month perfectly and she got through it and it was the right amount of work for her to get through and she felt very confident with the amount of tasks that they had to do each month. So this is a really good amount that you can work with in your own business when you're trying to build up your business. And then we work into a lead capture system. So some things to think about, you've got to set up an email pop-up. You might have to do one, like a different one, a couple of different times to test different email pop-ups. You can do some competition ideas, which can go into your Instagram account. You can also, um, in this case, case for this client, at the end of every video, we told them to offer a discount coupon. Um, then we look at the lead nurturing and we talk about the emails that they can send, ideas for emails, um, how to create a nurturing funnel. And then we talk about the follow-up strategy. So we talk about, you know, your bank card emails, um, creating urgency and scarcity in those emails, creating a video on your website when someone does purchase saying thank you thanks for purchasing hey this is great and the video doesn't take long to make you can do it with your iphone and you can just have a nice little video that gets people involved in your business so that is an amazing plan and if you could create that for your own business and follow that you will see after three months how much further along you will be than if you didn't have a plan ready for yourself yeah this is also this is really a good um plan i never seen it broken down a marketing plan broke down in three months but it's very very informative mm. and then you also when you mentioned sarah sale i use sarah sale to actually um to do affiliates like for other people um uh, for my businesses because you know like for like an accountant business you know i always get um banners and stuff made so i'll do an affiliate with a banner company and promote them um because i order for them a lot um yes so it can work both ways, whether you're mm-hmm. setting up affiliate program or whether you want to be um, an affiliate for someone else because you do their products a lot or you buy their parts a lot. So it works both ways. Um, no, and that's that's definitely true. And in the case of e-commerce, mm-hmm. a lot of people talk to me about what should I sell on my store? And some people might have their own one product. Let's say that there's um, someone that makes their own handmade, I don't know, let's say baby shoes. They make these one pair of baby shoes and they don't have anything else on their store. But if you can get more products, then you can get the same customer back to purchase something else. And that's where share sale would come in really handy, where you could start advertising other people's products that you, like you said, that you use already or you love, and you can make money off those products as well. So definitely works both ways. And you can set up an account where you're getting people to sell your products uh, your goods and then someone else is you're actually selling someone else's so you can use it in both ways at the same time Mm -hmm. awesome so um what other trainings do you offer (laughs) i offer everything around e-commerce so i've got one of the only courses that has been approved by shopify as a shopify training program Um, so that course is a full program where we go through everything from setting up your website to begin with all the way through to marketing and business. And these are a couple of the um, trainings that I have in there. I've got over a hundred hours of video. So that's why I'm laughing. I've got over a hundred hours of video trainings in there. Everything from how to set up your Google analytics properly, how to uh, do a ban and cart emails, how to do retargeting properly, how to use Google advertising properly, how to just run normal emails, how to do a pop-up, like how to, not just how to do a pop-up because anyone can tell you how to do a pop-up, but I talk about the psychology of how, which pop-ups work Mm -hmm. and which one excuse me, which ones work and which ones don't. So there's a lot of uh, pop-ups out there that actually, you'll see on websites, but they're not getting any signups on them. Um, So having a pop-up that psychologically comes across in the right way to someone, then that makes the big difference. So for example, the worst thing you can use on your website is to say, sign up for my newsletter. And the reason for that is, T, I don't know how old you are, but I can tell you I'm 40. And I remember when the whole like internet thing started and we got email addresses, I remember getting an email address 
and we got on these newsletters and we used to be so excited of, wow, we're on a newsletter, we're getting emails. And it was so cool. Whereas now no one wants to get emails that are newsletters. We want to get emails that actually mean something or we unsubscribe. So to say on your website, sign up for my newsletter, no one wants to be on a newsletter. They want to get specific. Maybe they want offers. Maybe they want discounts. Maybe they want to be the first to know. Mm -hmm. But no one just wants to be on a newsletter. So that's the psychology behind the difference between people signing up on your website and not signing up on your website. So that's that's the sort of trading I offer. I've got all sorts of little videos like that. Like I said, over 100 hours of different video trainings. And I offer about 25 hours of that for free if you sign up. Um, completely for free you can watch about 20 hours of videos 25 hours awesome so i'm going to share your social handle so people can know how to get in contact with you thank you yes so um yes so tell us how we can get in contact with you miss caroline if we would like to Sure. So you can find me on Instagram, which is uh, just ask Parker and probably the best place to get me is in my Facebook group, which is free to join. And that is winning with Shopify and you can sign up into the Facebook group and I chat to people in there as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I, it was very, very informative. I took, I had a lot of takeaways. I um, look forward to actually seeing, um, look forward to actually seeing the marketing plan so that was um very very helpful to me um gave me some ideas um so you guys if you also want to get in contact with me my information is well my number is 910-317-0396 you can contact me by email um contact at mjfinancial.biz or you can schedule a consultation with me at www.mj.biz um, and you can also find this episode on Anchor, you guys, if you want to go back and hear the replay. Thank you so much, Miss Caroline, for being on the show today. I very appreciate you. Thanks, T. Great to be here. All right, you guys. I will see you all on the next episode of Tips with T.